Uh, Noah versus Jake. Grixis Delver versus This Grixis is a Tez. very New England legacy sort of deck. Mm -hmm. I like this. This is probably going to be nothing but foils, too. Yeah, for sure. You don't just roll up with this. No. This is a labor of love. Remember, Team Card Hoarder, Noah Walker, 9 and 1. See if he can overcome everything that Jake is doing over here. Jake from State Farm. So, uh, Noah Walker cannot beat an ensnaring bridge game one. An empty hand and ensnaring bridge is game. Bolt you. Yeah, you can bolt him out. That's so, his out. Far side, pretty straightforward what he wants to oh, do look here. Look at Noah Walker with the fancy ponders. Maybe parlayed some of his tournament winnings. Mm hmm. One of the many ultras booths here on the SCG Tour. I like it. All right, no, happy, happy with the pond. Let's go back over to Jake. Jake has an ancient tomb. Busted. <laughs> Busted. Down to, eight, down to 18. That is a Demir Signet. Less busted. All right, Noah. Well. Unclear what that could even mean. It's, it's bad news. Yeah, you know, it, you know, it's not just random. Just, doesn't strike you as fair. It's not random, okay. whatever's going on. No Walker. Going to sacrifice Blue to Delta, go get an underground. So you know Wasteland Jet here. This... He's a young pyromancer. And now we will go back over to Jake. Let's see what Jake wants to do here on his second turn. He's already got access to three mana. He plays land, he's got access to four mana. So he's going to sacrifice a flooded strand, search up a land. There's Basic Island. As predicted, just all foils. Yep. You are, you are on it. A labor of love. You were on it since day one. The follow-up here for Farrar. It's a walking ballista for one. Sweet. <laughs> it's a one of in his deck. <laughs> and I like here trying to play around days. Mm -hmm. Doesn't need to do it for two as long as he can keep the board relatively clear. Um, he's got a big edge as the game proceeds. I'd kill that thing. Yeah. All right. Ballista see, will trade with Young Pyromancer. You can see Walker with days in hand. Yeah. So, uh, very heads up play there from Farrar. Flooded Strand. Young Pyromancer. Straightforward turn there for Noah. Let's go back over to Jake. It's Strixie. Four of those in this deck. Not a resolve. Jake will draw a card. Baleful Strix really popular this weekend. Yep. I've seen a lot of Baleful Strix decks. Well, the opportunity cost is really low, and there are a lot of Gurmag anglers running around the joint. Jake will take two from Ancient Tomb. This is a chalice for one. Noah Walker is going to sacrifice his Flooded Strand very quickly. The walls are already starting to close in a little bit here on, on Walker. Can't fight over this. Effectively, a lot of his draws are dead. Mm-hmm. Bolts, Ponders, Brainstorms, Probe, Spell Pierces, Fork, Bolt. Delver, Death Ride Shaman. That's a lot of cards. That's a lot of cards. That's Spell Pierce. That'll take care of the Chalice of the Void and yield Noah. A Dylan Donigan Elemental Token. This is a Lightning Bolt on Baleful Strix. How about another token? In there for three. Young Power Mantra's getting rolling now. Uh, and... Walker may not be totally aware of 100% of what's going on with Ferrari's deck, but uh, I think he realizes that time is not on his side here. No, I think the longer we go, the worse it gets. Yeah. And so I, I appreciate just trying to beat down. 
three mana. Toxic Deluge. Force of Will. Exiling Days. Another elemental token. So that's countered. Jake will pass a turn back. Noah Walker going to quickly untap and draw a card. In for five. Ferrar's down to six. We'll go back over to Jake. He needs to get something set up here. Snaring Bridge going to be a little too slow right now, too. It yeah, looks like Force of Will, Sword of the Meek, and Chalice in hand. Not so. great. Probably doesn't want to use that Ancient Tomb again, either. There's a chalice. Here's a brainstorm in response. Walker will draw a couple of cards here. Wasteland among them. Put two back. Now I'll take care of it. No, Walker's going to win again. And one here over Jake Farrar. Grixis Delver very quickly up a game over Grixis Tezra. We want to see some fireworks here from Jake Farrar, which hopefully we'll have the opportunity to in game number two. But we got to wait for that as these players do sideboards. So we'll take a quick break, and then we'll go over their sideboards. We are back, Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan. We're here in the booth, getting ready to watch Noah Walker play game number two against Jake Farrar. Farrar will be on the play here for game two with his innovative Grixis Tezzeret deck. Four lane out of the way, two Loadsome Golem, an Engineered Plague, a Walking Ballista, Toxic Deluge, a Misdirection, a Padim, Council of Innovation, a Trinosphere, a Chain of Mephistopheles, a Helm of Obedience, and the Abyss. Uh, you, I know you know all the inner workings here. Yeah, I just don't know the card from Kaladesh, the, the Enchant Worlds I know. So, <laughs> yeah, of course you do. Um, I would probably bring in the, the extra anti-Young Pyromancer stuff, which is the Engineer Plague, the Toxic Deluge, and the Walking Ballista. Once you're there, um, I think you could bring in the Abyss, and a change of Meph Mephistopheles probably comes in against uh, any deck that's flush with cantrips. Other side of things, we got Noah Walker, who's got three Cabal Therapies, two Surgical Extraction, Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blast, Fork Bolt, March Casualties, Abrade, Ancient Grudge, Dismember, Pithy Needle, the Price of Progress, which is definitely good in this matchup, and a Fluster Storm. Yeah, I like the price. I, I think you need, you want the Needle, the Grudge, and the Abrade. Those are kind of your, your anti-artifact measures. I don't know if you want to go so deep as to bring in the blasts. I would imagine Noah wants to cut the four bolt and the f uh, the four lightning bolts, so that's five slots. Maybe that gives you enough room for the red blasts too. Well, those are the options there for both players. They'll be underway here in game number two in just a moment. Let's talk that StarCityGames.com weekly sale for the first time today, where you've got until tomorrow morning at 10:59 a.m. to save on 10% of select Eternal singles. Yep. Make sure to head back, you know, Monday afternoon because 11 o'clock Eastern time, the sale changes every week. So check out what the new sale is. Right now, limited time, as Cedric mentioned, only for about another 24 hours. You can get 10% off select Eternal Singles at go.starcitygames.com slash weekly sale. All right, let's turn our attention again. We're two here between Walker and Farrar. We've got Noah Walker on Grixis Delver. We've got Jake Farrar on Grixis Tezzeret. That's not a typo. It is a Tezzeret deck. We didn't get to see much in game number one, but we are hoping for more here in game number two and potentially game number three. Do you know what Chains of Mephistopheles does? I have 
I know you shouldn't cast Brainstorm when it's on the battlefield. All right, that's pretty much it. You yeah. got it. <laughs> I, I mean, there's some details. Yeah, there are a lot of details that I don't know. It has a lot of text. There's a Polluted Delta. Go over to Walker. He's going to sacrifice a Flooded Strand. Underground Sea is the land he's going to search for. He's already tapping it for mana, so we could see a cantrip here. Maybe even the extremely powerful Deathrite Shaman. It'll be a Cabal Therapy. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he can pair with Young Pyromancer, so even if it whiffs, it isn't that big of a deal. But Named Chalice of the Void. The whiff. I think Chalice of the Void is a fine name in the dark. Baleful Strix, Mox Diamond, Thopter Foundry, Toxic Deluge. Baleful Strix, Ancient Tomb. A little surprising not to see Mox Diamond on turn one into like a Baleful Strix on turn one. A little surprised by that. Uh, well, you, you have the option to do that on the second turn if you're feeling so inclined. Um, turn, casting the Baleful Strix on turn one isn't, it's not like getting ahead on that is a very powerful thing to be doing. And you may want to have a little bit more information about, you know, what land to pitch if you draw a land the next turn. There's Ancient Tomb. Here's Mox Diamond. Discarding City of Traders. Oh, fair enough. And now sacrifice Pluto Delta. I think there's an argument for doing what you suggested, because you might want to do the same thing on the second turn, and then, you know, you're, you're cantripping earlier, you're turning through your deck. But uh, I don't mind the play of waiting one turn in the event that you draw a land that might be worse than your Ancient Tomb. And Farrar got paid off because that's exactly what happened. Yeah, Drew City, yeah, Drew yeah, City of Traders. It was kind of perfect. There's Baleful Strix. To Walker we go. To Cabal Therapy. This one's probably going to hit. Name Baleful Strix. Dak Fade in the draw. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are doing it. Yes, we are. Dak Fade on the screen, please. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick making a request. No, oh, Walker, I have to imagine that's a second land. There's Dak Faden. Three mana, three loyalty. Plus one, target player draws two cards and discards two cards. No, it's target player that does that. Minus two, gain control, target artifact. Minus six, you get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell that targets one or more permanents. Gimme. Take that permanent. Which is not exactly like Farrar is flush with cards that target. So it's not really about going the ultimate. I think it's more, he's got a lot of mismatched jumbly pieces, and drawing two and discarding two a turn is really good. You understand that Dak Faden is the greatest thief in the multiverse. You I've know heard. That. You've heard that? Whoa. Yeah, Deathrite Shaman Cabal Therapy flashback. Yeah, see you later, Dak Faden. We're not having any of that happen. Yep. All right, Cabal Walker's Therapy. showing a lot of respect there for, for Dak Faden. I, I, I think I you mean, should. That's a painful therapy to flash back in that spot. But. Let's see what the follow-up is here. All right, Thopter Foundry, just waiting on a Sword of the Meek. Here's a Ponder. Take a look at the top couple. And he's going to shuffle. So. It's Random like, card coming. It's not like Walker's deck is all that well suited to play against something with a lot of artifacts. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not like Legacy is flush with these artifact heavy decks. But you look through the sideboard here, you got one Grudge and one Abrade. Um, it might be a little short on interaction. Big Fish. Big Fish not great in the face of Baleful Strix. Mm. Thopter Foundry can also do some work here. It's mm -hmm. a lot of time. Saw a Wasteland take care of the Ancient Tomb.
Jake with the replacement Ancient Tomb. Two mana. Chalice for one. All right, not bad. That makes it really hard to kill the Strix. And if the Strix is lined up against the Gurmag Angler successfully, then Farrar's got uh, a, a lot of leverage as, he's, as we get into the middle turns here. Again, much of Walker's deck shut off in the face of Chalice of the Void. Mm-hmm. Wasteland again. And Walker, no interest in attacking. No surprise there. We'll go back over to Jake now. One of Walker's best draws in this spot is his one sideboarded copy of Ancient Grudge. And you can see he's lacking both red and green mana right now. Well, there's your Flooded Strand. So that'll solve a little bit of the problem. Yeah. But it's not like he has a Taiga to go get. So we can cast the Shatter once, not mm -hmm. a second time, as things currently stand. Mephistopheles. A little redundant now with the Chalice on one, because that locks out the cantrips anyway. So the deal is, basically, if you draw beyond your draw step, you have to put a card back on top of your deck for each card beyond the first. All right, I'll give you, the, I'll read it off Break to you. it down. This is a, some good template. Every time a player draws a card, that player must first discard a card from his or her hand. If there are no cards in player's hand, take top card from library and place it in the graveyard instead of drawing. This enchantment does not apply, does not apply to the first card drawn by a player during the draw phase. It's easy to understand. I like that there are just words missing because <laughs> they had to try to get it in six lines of text. Mm -hmm. So the font is really small and also says take top card, which is not English. <laughs> <laughs> legends is dope. Anytime I see someone that has a deck with a lot of Legends cards in it, I'm excited. Oh, we found the problem solver. True Name Nemesis. Yeah, True Name Nemesis. It gets through all this rubbish. So now the pressure's on Farrar here to get, resolve it in Staring Bridge. That's yes. his cover against Trinane Nemesis. Some sort of Planeswalker, perhaps. Some of his Planeswalkers can also overpower in this spot. Yeah. That's true. Where is the greatest thief in the multiverse? Did it? He's in the graveyard. Oh, right. That's too bad. Cabal therapy. Yeah, he wants to show up, though. You can't search for a Swamp nope. Flooded Strand. There we go. Nope. Try again. You can search for, you can search for a non-basic. Yep. I mean, he's clearly worried about getting Wastelanded again. Oh, no, it wouldn't have a third Wasteland. That'd be the luckiest thing of all time. Does not apply. Yeah. <laughs> Does not apply. Yeah. Take top card. Take top card. Let's see what we're going to have here. That is a Demir Signet. So I think the hope here, uh, if Farrar can get to an ensnaring bridge, I think he wants to make sure that Walker can't daze it. If he trades with a Force of Will, whatever. Nothing you can do about that. Okay. Looks like Walker has just picked up one of his sideboarded, uh, his one sideboard, a Braid. That's a good card. Braid's nice as it allows you to kill the Chalice, but the problem with blowing up the Chalice is most of what you unlock is your cantrips, and then the Chains of Mephistopheles has that covered. Indeed. Well, here is a braid on Baleful Strix. And this is why Noah's deciding to go after the Baleful Strix here. There really isn't a whole lot to do getting rid of the Chalice. Now he's going to come on in with Gurmag Angler and True Name Nemesis. Farrar's down a 10. Well, Jake, we got to draw something good here to stop him. Maybe this ensnaring bridge, perhaps? It's a t Oh, boy. Force of Will? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Force will continues to be fan standing. And uh, Deluge for five, one of the better things you can force. <laughs> I think it's part of the casting cost you have to pay the life on oh, yeah. Toxic Deluge. Oh, yeah. That makes it difficult. I'm going to sacrifice an artifact here to my Thopter Foundry. And make a blocker. Get a little bit of life, make a blocker. Yeah, you can chump the angler here. There we go. I'm, turn. I'm a little surprised he got rid of the mana. I guess it depends what he's playing to, but I'd be more inclined to get the chal to sacrifice the chalice, I think. Um, chains has got some stuff on Because the chains is covering that stuff. 
There's an island. What is the card? I'm curious what the card is in his hand. I think I don't know. I uh, sacrifice Mox Diamond. Looking to block. Up to four. Down to one. Come on, Bridge. Of the ensnaring variety. Not going to happen. Noah Walker going to win this match over Jake Farrar. Two games to zero. Grixis Delver is going to do it again. Going to take care of Grixis Tezra. And for Noah Walker, he's 10 and 1 now. He is one step closer to another top eight with Grixis Delver, a deck we rarely see him lose with. So, uh, 